Hi guys, back with another video for you today and I have the lovely Ashley here with me. Today we're going to talk about 20 favorite designer fragrances that I love that Ashley has ranked. All coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Right. Ashley is back. She's been attending perfumery school, studying yeah. perfumery. Yeah. How's it going? It's good. So I just finished my second year um, and I also did an internship with IFF and I'm about to start my third and final year of school and then hopefully I can begin my career as a perfumer after oh, that. Awesome. Yeah. So you're going to be an actual perfumer. Let us hope. Yeah. Creating perfumes <laughs> that we're going to buy and smell. Yeah. Great. What's That's the dream, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So I thought well, since she's here and we all love designer fragrances. We thought that uh, she should rank the ones that I like in her favorites order. Okay. What was your number 20? Oh, my number 20, okay. So my number 20 is Declaration by Cartier. Let's hold it up a little. Uh, which is by Jean-Claude Elena, I believe. The original, but this is um, Mathilde Laurent. Ah, okay. So. She did the, the parfum version. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I think this is one of like the most iconic fragrances from the Cartier line, at least, and it's famous because there's not that many cardamom fragrances on the market. And I struggled with it for a really long time. You know, it's one of those where it's like such a technically beautiful fragrance, and it's so classic and elegant, um, and I think that's why it made my top 20 list. Does it make my heart sing? No. Is it a beautiful fragrance? Yes. And I think if it does make your heart sing, then you know you really can't go wrong with Declaration by Cartier. All right. Yeah. That's number 20. Number 19 is Costume National Ohm. And um, to me, there is a lot of peach, stone fruit, and to me it gives an impression of osmanthus, which is really nice. It's really different from a lot of men's fragrances on the market right now. It doesn't smell like anything else in our top 20. Or like one of the reasons that Valentino Zuomo didn't make the list was because of it's similar to Christian Dior. This is a really unique fragrance. And so if you do kind of want to smell different from other guys, I think it's so fresh and it's such a good pick, especially for summer. Number 18. Is Replica's By the Fireside. And this is just such a yummy vanilla. Super unisex. It's a smoky vanilla. It's so good. I just imagine like if you're going to a bonfire or Christmas nights, it's really something you want to cuddle up with. And I think it's great for that. It's yummy. It is. It's delicious. Yeah. And this is a unisex fragrance, whereas the previous two are strictly for... Mm, is the declaration for men? I think it's for men, yeah. Yeah, the other two are definitely for men. This is a unisex, mm -hmm. but I think any fragrance can be yeah. worn by both, both sexes, right? I think I have worn almost every fragrance in our top 20. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is Maison Margiela Replica by The Fireplace. Yes. So number 17. Gucci Guilty. Yeah. So again. Absolute pour homme. Yes. As far as smelling different from the pack, absolutely. Here you're literally smelling different from the wolf pack because it is so animalic. Um, but it's really good. Normally, I am a little afraid of all animalic fragrances. They're usually too much for me, but this is such a good balance of like leather and civet notes. It's really sexy. Um, and it is different because it doesn't have like the normal like amber, amber or like pineapple notes that other men's fragrances have. So I feel like this is different while still smelling super good. Cool. I love that one. Mm -hmm. I don't think it did very well because it was a little too animalic for, oh, yeah. for modern guys. <laughs> <laughs> Number 16 is Pure Malt from Mugler. Mm -hmm. So what did you like about this one? The dry down. So, um, you know, we were discussing these before and at the top, I really wasn't sure what was happening. It wasn't bad. The top wasn't bad, but to me it wasn't so unique. But the base is so smooth and you want to keep sniffing it and there is something addictive about that base that I really liked. Could it be the booziness? Yeah, I'm a big boozy <laughs> fan. That is true. Cool. So at number 15, we've got Armani's Aqua de Joe Profumo. Now, why did you pick that one at number 15? So I had been really hesitant about even smelling it because I thought I was really familiar with Aqua de Joe. Um, I actually studied it a lot during my internship and it was always a fragrance that I thought had a lot of promise and I always didn't like the end. It always felt very harsh to me and it was because I realized I was smelling, I've only had ever smelled new formulations of it. Of the original. Of the original. Not the, not the perf perf Profumo. The Profumo. Yeah. And me and Sebastian were talking and you were saying that the Profumo smells like the Aqua de Joe did when it first came out. To me it does. Yes. And I had never smelled it when it first came out. I had only ever smelled modern versions. And this does not have the harshness of the normal cologne, which is so nice. This is all the best parts of Aqua de Joe without the harshness. It is so good. Yeah. 
it's great. It's still really fresh, even though it's in a parfum concentration. And it's just, it's so well done. It's really smooth, which is great and really well blended. I love this one. Yeah. All right, number 14, I'm going to a classic, mm -hmm. a classic. Oh, Sauvage. Oh, Sauvage. Really just one of the, I think one of the stalwart men's fragrances. Iconic, the, right? Iconic, yeah. it's Eau Sauvage, right? And you know, you have the new Sauvage, which smells nothing like Eau Sauvage. Um, and personally, I prefer Eau Sauvage to Sauvage, even though they smell nothing alike and really can't even be compared. But, um, you know, when we talk about men's cologne today, like how often do you smell something this citrusy? Like, I don't come across that very often, personally. This is pretty citrusy. So citrusy. Um, and so, like, I mean, it's the only, like, pure citrus, I think, in our top 20. And it's just not coming out a lot. But to me, this doesn't smell like a grandpa. And it doesn't feel dated. I, this is so timeless because, you know, the ingredients is... You can tell they use a lot of naturals. You know, there's natural lemon in this. Can you, you know, notice that? Bergman. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. And so, you know, if you want a citrus and you're not finding anything in today's market, I feel like you can totally go for this. And you're not going to smell old. You're not going to smell mm -hmm. dated. You are going to smell like a Sicilian coast. <laughs> it is delicious. Yeah. So a lot of people tell, recommend this to me as a vetiver fragrance. Oh, interesting. There is a vetiver right. note in there. In but the dry down, but not... I don't think it comes out too much no. until like, you get to the dry down. And later on our list, we have some really incredible vetiver fragrances. And if you're looking for vetiver... This would not be my first recommendation. To me, this is a citrus through and through. It's a cologne. So, you know, you have some aromatic qualities, but you have a lot of citrus, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's a great one. I love it. Mm -hmm. All right, at number 13, Prada's Lone. Oh, sorry, Prada Lone. Prada Lone. <laughs> <laughs> it was in a black bottle, so I was thinking Prada Black. <laughs> now, this one to me, well, it's kind of similar to the Dior Homme. It's that powdery iris. It's yes. not. It's not the same. It's true. It is like Christian Dior Homme, but it's its own take on it. Yeah. Um. There's still a, there's some lavender mixed in with the iris that I think gives it a fougere feel that I don't necessarily get from Dior Homme. And it's it's a good smelling fragrance. Is it breaking any barriers? No, but is it a solid fragrance? If you want to smell good and this fragrance speaks to you, I think it's a beautiful lavender iris blend. Is it leeching off of the Dior Homme success? Yes, but not as much as Valentino Uomo, <laughs> and therefore it okay. made the list. So this one, this one is different compared to the Valentino Uomo Intense. Yes. You thought the Valentino Uomo... I think the Uomo... addition of the lavender and that fougere quality kind of gave it a spin. I mean, obviously, anytime there's a big successful fragrance, you're going to have kind of like, not copycats, but things that are inspired by yeah, it, yeah. right? Um, and so, because people love these fragrances and they want to incorporate that into their own, but I feel like the Fougere twist on this makes it its, its own fragrance, and I think it's still really good. Cool, yeah. Next up, we have another Prada, and this is Luna Rosa Black. Yeah. You thought this is the one we were This is one, yeah, before. Do you get the similarities between uh, the Bulgari two? Black? I don't, I don't think they sell some, I was a big fan of Bulgari, Bulgari Black. I love the rubber in it. Um, this maybe isn't as edgy. But it's still so lovely. It's such a nice, dark, almost not quite leathery. But the amber in it does have like, you smell the labdanum. Um, it's a good fragrance. It, fragrance. Again, it has that addictive amber that I really like. I think it is a little boozy. Is there lavender in here too? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. I get lavender. Not as so much as in the other Prada we were smelling, but there is like a lavender amber, but it's it's muted. Like if you're afraid of lavender, because sometimes I get, um, I have actually really struggled with lavender because, um, so I'm Mexican, so growing up we had something called Fabuloso, which is a floor cleaner, and it's lavender. I love the smell of that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really great, like it's the, it's the yummiest thing to it mop with. It's a really such a good. trail of smell in yes. the house. And so it was, it was a really long time before I could disassociate lavender from any kind of fragrance. And I think now I've kind of gotten there, but the lavender here, I think it's much more amber than lavender. It's a really small facet. Like if you are afraid of lavender, I'd still say try the Prada Black for sure. Prada Black. Luna Rosa Black. All right, next up. Terre, classic. Very classic. Men's classic. Terre de Hermes. Hermes. Show the cap, because the cap I really like. You just, you twist and then you spray, which I think is genius. I love that. Yeah. This is a masterpiece, I think. Absolutely. I mean, it's a classic. I, mean, well, I guess maybe I shouldn't call it masterpiece. It's just a, like a men's staple. Yes, exactly. Every man probably man wore this probably. At some point. And it's still good. Again, Orange and vetiver. Mm -hmm. So if you want a vetiver, this is a really good place to start because I think this is probably the most famous vetiver really? of the ones out there. Do you call it a vetiver or do you call it a citrus? I'd say more vetiver than citrus for okay. me. All right. 
I mean, there are citrus notes, but you know, with the Sauvage, right? The first thing I get is citrus no Sauvage. The first thing I get in Terre d'Hermes is the vetiver. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 a staple. If you're yeah. if you're into the designer men's fragrances, this is one that you definitely have to try. Or gift giving. I feel like Terre d'Hermes. I mean, how many people just like Terre d'Hermes? It's a small fraction. It's a very safe. It's a safe blind buy if you know you like vetiver. It's a good, you know, if you're getting your son or someone their first fragrance, it's a good one. It's yeah. Terre d'Hermes, you know, it speaks for itself. And there's two additional versions. There's the Parfum version, mm -hmm. which is pure perfume. Mm -hmm. There's also the, um, the fresh version, top 10. Top 10. What do we go for number 10? So if you guys watch the channel often, you will remember when I was here and did the Blue de Chanel reviews. And so here we have the Parfum of Blue de Chanel. So good. And I think this is just someone where it's a crowd pleaser. If you want compliments, Blue de Chanel. Um, people always seem to compliment Blue de Chanel. Oh, they do. I have girlfriends, you know, when their exes broke up with them and they were Blue de Chanel, they buy it for themselves kind of thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Really? I had a friend that, like, if she smelled Blue de Chanel, so she would just kind of, like, tear up a little bit because it reminded her of an oh, ex. Oh, no. How sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, if you want someone to tear up over you, Blue de Chanel. <laughs> so, let me ask you this. Uh, what do you think of Blue de Chanel compared to Sauvage? <sighs> okay. Are they comparable? To me, no, because this has that, that amber at the bottom that Eau de Sauvage doesn't have. To me, that's a, a traditional cologne through and through with the bright citrus. Um, I'm talking about not mm -hmm. Eau Sauvage, but just Sauvage. Oh, just Sauvage. Sorry about that. Sauvage is such a powerhouse that I notice it gets really oversprayed and I smell all the time and it's not a bad, I don't think it's a bad fragrance. Also, I have like a very good friend that wears it all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to, and it's so popular, but it's one of those things that I've smelled too much at this point where, and it's, there is something about it that is so aggressive. That's the word. Yes. <laughs> That's definitely the word. It's one of those fragrances where it speaks before you do. And I don't feel like Blue de Chanel, Blue de Chanel kind of still lets you shine through. I think Eau de Sauvage is so aggressive that people are smelling you before they can even like know you. Um, so I prefer this personally. But again, you know, follow your heart when it comes to fragrance. All right, number nine. Oh, yay. I love this one. I love this one, too. I hadn't smelled it before coming here, and I fell in love. This is so good. I think it would smell so good on a man, but equally good on a woman. And I feel like there's very few true unisexes out there for me. Um, most of the time, I still lean feminine. I, I run the gamut, but sometimes I like smelling masculine, and this is just right there you know it would smell incredible on a man it would smell incredible on a woman it's such a good amber true amber um so this is called isemiyaki lodice noir ambre or amber mm -hmm. so it's a dark amber yes it's a it dark smells amber. niche quality a little it does, bit but yes. it's definitely designer it has this designer touches to it um it's a little leathery amber yes, i definitely get the leather it's so good though. it's awesome it's addictive it's sexy if you love ambers, just go get it. I mean, it's delicious. 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 All right. What's number eight? Dunhill Icon. Yay. I Yay. love that one. I love it too. And I feel like it's so underrated. I personally don't hear about it a lot. I'm not going to lie. This bottle isn't my favorite. But the smell. Heavy, huh? Really heavy. And you know, that might be some people's thing. I just think the metal is a lot, but I'm being nitpicky here. It's good right out the gate. I, it starts with like an orange and then it gets woody. And then again, like on a base of amber with like a lot of men's fragrances. It's good from top to bottom. And what I like about it is I have this thing where like I really need my nose to be satisfied. And for that to happen, I want citrus. I want woods. I want ambers. I want different parts of a fragrance to be coming out at me all the time. You know, I want something that really develops. And it's not that I'm against a linear fragrance, but to me, I love when a fragrance changes and Dunhill does that. Do you think it reminds you a little bit of Terre d'Hermes? I hear the comparisons. Okay. I feel like this is less vetiver than Terre d'Hermes. It is a vetiver still. Um, Do you get pedigree? Yes. I definitely get pedigree. Um, and again, with the orange facet. With Terre d'Hermes, the vetiver screams at me. Here, I just get so many different things. Mm. It's, it's a little bit more more woven, more intricate. All the notes kind of dance like together. A exactly. Where Terre d'Hermes, the better really is the star. Okay. So this next one, I don't think uh, you had sampled no. before. This is uh, from Robert Graham, as you can mm -hmm. see right there. 
It's a house, a clothing designer for men. They mostly do lots of men's shirts. Mm -hmm. And they launched three fragrances. Yes. And this is one of them called Valor. And it's a pretty bottle. And I want to show the little like bulldog on the cap, which I just think is really cute. <laughs> on the larger bottle, there's actually a real bulldog on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I love that. See, so yeah, really great packaging, which I'm always a fan of. Um, so we were talking earlier, and I feel like, you know, there are fragrances that are kind of common, right? And Blue de Chanel is one of them. It's a great fragrance, but a lot of people have it. To me, if you love Blue de Chanel, but you want something a little bit more unique, if you're starting your niche journey, not that this is necessarily niche, these are all designer fragrances, but to me, this has more of a niche aspect than the Blue de Chanel. Yeah, absolutely. This is where you go. It still has that yummy, fruity amber without having the kind of like dihydromersonal feel of a lot of men's fragrances, without having that kind of like soapy, you know, obviously I, like macho. This is just very refined and it's so good. It's a good first foray into kind of like different fragrances and you're not going to smell like everyone else when you put this on. And you know how much this is at the discounters? It's about $50 for 100 mil. Boom. So it's a win all around. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm here for a bargain. <laughs> all right. This next one is a mm -hmm. newish fragrance. Yeah. This is number six. And this is Ombre Leather from Tom Ford. Lord. Good leather. Very few good leathers being released nowadays. You know... Obviously, there's like hundreds of fragrance releases every year. And how many of them, you know, do we actually love? I love this. This is a true leather. And how many things actually smell like the name? This yeah. smells like leather. This is a dark, rich, kind of raunchy leather. And I, I'm here it's for sexy. it. It is. Yeah. It really is. This is good. It's kind of like, a, there's like a darkness to it. It's very mysterious. It is like a guy in a motorcycle jacket, kind of. <laughs> it's good stuff, ombre leather. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. Great choice. All right, number five, we're going to the top five, and this mm -hmm. is Givenchy, Gentleman Givenchy, EDP. Yes. So the, the whole Gentleman series confuses me. They've done Givenchy Gentleman, Gentleman mm -hmm. Givenchy, and the original was G yes. Gentleman. So this is the latest of that whole series. And this is so good. What is with the similar naming? Like, do they want to confuse us or do they think it's we're keeping confusing. on top of it? Because I'm not keeping on top of it and I work in this industry. <laughs> you like the original, right? From the 70s? So yes, exactly. I love the original from the 70s. It's really hard to wear. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, this is so good. But if I wore it, it's so animalic. And it definitely is a little bit like your grandpa, right? Like the vintage one. And I think this kept all the good parts, all the yummy, sexy, animalic, amber, without getting rid of the parts that made me question, without getting rid of the parts that made it hard to wear. Do you pick up any similarities to that whole Dior own powdery iris? I think there's iris. iris, there's the powdery iris. Again, when something does well, right? Everyone wants a piece of it. That's so true. But this is a, a original on its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has that facet, which is, I mean, iris is so good and it's so luxurious, you yeah. know? It's such an expensive note um, that when it's in something, like your nose just gravitate towards it. And I think, as you'll see with the top fives, these are just things that your nose gravitates towards. It's stuff that, you know, you want to get in closer and smell a person. It's unique. And for, especially like, this is a relatively new release. Yeah. It is. It's encouraging that, you know, we're getting a lot of like interesting stuff happening. Designer, I feel like they're listening to customers. Thank you. Yes. Um, with like the whole niche revolution, they're kind of getting on that and trying to be more daring in the stuff they put out. I like that. Yeah. Cool. So that's number five, and number four is yeah. Mugler Pure Havan. Yes. What do you like about this that you didn't like about Pure Malt as much? Okay, so I'm here for the gooey sweetness. Like, I love a good gourmand. I love the you tobacco. Do like oh, I'm obsessed, yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and you like tobacco? It's my favorite, and I love tobacco. And this is both tobacco and gooey honey. I love when people smell edible. I know I'm, you know, especially in the niche community, I'm a minority there. People are tired of edible fragrances. I, am, I still love it. And this is so yummy. Yeah, there's the tobacco. It's very tiny bit smoky. Um, it's so good. So I had actually, I read the Havana note list before I ever got to smell it and I needed to try it. And it probably, I got, it took four years for me to finally get to it and it really lived up to the hype mm. and the notes. And it's absolutely worth, you know, seeking it out if it sounds like something you'd want to wear. Do you get the cherry? Yeah, a little bit. A little um, bit, not too much, right? Yeah, not too much. Yeah, and I think I struggle a lot with cherry. No, to me, it's more like a little bit of cherry and like the overall honeyed part of it. We're going to more gooey stuff. Yes. Oh my gosh, guys. Fahrenheit Parfum. You love this oh, one. Ah, so much. It's also boozy. If everyone I could ever date would smell like this. 
I don't think I've ever dated anyone that wore Fahrenheit and I, I should actually buy it for the person that I'm seeing now, but holy moly, this is so sexy. Wow. It has, there's like a like a burnt tar, right? Like that's the isobutyquinoline, which I guess you can't use anymore, but they had it in the original formula. Um, and you know, whatever they're using now smells exactly how it smelled before. It's not that the, re if anything, with reformulations, it's been better. It is so good. I'm obsessed. It's green, and I feel like there's very few green sexy fragrances, right? Yeah. But it is, it's green. There's a greenness to it, yeah. Gooey. Delicious, and so unique. I feel like no one, I wish people smelled like this, but no one smells like this. Mm. Well, I smell like that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes. Fahrenheit Parfum, number three. Do it, guys. Please, everyone, just go now. <laughs> <laughs> go get it. <laughs> go get it. Well, is it going to get better at number two? They're different. They're totally different. So, again, like that one is like, this is, again, refined gentleman, Dior own. Sexy refined gentleman. <laughs> sexy refined gentleman, but I think for me, like, sexy, sexy is Fahrenheit. Mm, you know? But this is so good. It is so good. And guys, I didn't influence her. She no. chose these by herself. These are my favorite designer fragrances. She put the list together. Yeah. I brought down a bunch <laughs> of stuff and she actually left so off. So if some. you disagree, it's all me. <laughs> <laughs> but what makes this sexy? So yeah, so the reason I put this above number two, it's, I almost don't have words. Like the iris, I mean, this smells expensive. Like this smells like an expensive formula, whether it is or not, you know, none of us will ever know, but it's so refined. It's absolutely unisex. It's one of the most beautiful irises I've seen in a designer fragrance, if not the most beautiful iris I've seen in a designer fragrance. You know, this is my number one designer fragrance. Okay. So, you know, it's my number two, so we're close. It's really <laughs> up there. Um, I'm so scared that this is discontinued. It's not readily available anymore. I'm fearing, I'm fearing it. That would be such it. a shame. I'm fearing it. So again, reasons to stock up. It's, it's a masterpiece. And I know it definitely came out in the 2000s. Um, the original did. This one came out uh, in 2014. Okay. The, the Parfum version. The, the, the extra strain. And I will say the Parfum is better than any version I've ever smelled. This is the version to get, in my opinion. Um, and the others are beautiful, but this is just so rich and... Um, Keyword, rich. Yeah, just... I, again, I don't want to speak, I just want to keep smelling. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Dior Homme Parfum is number two. Yes. And one more, Lalique Ingenoir à la Extreme. So why, why this one is number one? So this is a fragrance that is so near and dear to my heart. So I'm a vetiver lover. I'm obsessed with vetiver. It's probably my favorite, if not one of my favorite notes of all time. Um, I actually wore this all through university. It was my first niche-ish fragrance again it's still designer but it's not you know it's not chanel it's not gucci it's not dior and um i had just i had been in my fragrance journey for a little bit and this is the first masculine i started wearing and it's super masculine and i was in a calculus class one day probably wearing a little bit too much of it because i loved it so much and the boy in front of me could not fathom a girl wearing this scent but he could smell it and he just kind of shouted out like what's that smell? <laughs> like thinking it came from the outside and I was like, I was very shy, um, you know, growing up. And so I was just kind of like, okay, no, I'm not going to say it to me. I was very afraid. <laughs> I didn't know if he liked it or if he didn't like it. But even then, like normally it would make me stop wearing a fragrance, but I loved it so much. I wore it again, like at least my, all my freshman year and then wore it mixed with other fragrances until I graduated. Still wear it all the time now. I just ran out before I moved to Paris and I have another bottle coming in. To me, this is the greatest vetiver of all time. Really? I'm just gonna say it. Um, it's so smoky. It's so different from any other vetiver I've smelled. Um, there's like a sharpness to it that I think should bother me and never does. It's what mm. makes me want to come back to it and smell like it's a sharp, dark vetiver. There's something about it that's austere and I would never think that a fragrance like this would fit my personality. Like it's dark, it's austere. None of that vibes with me, but this fragrance speaks to my soul. Oh, wow. Um, and I think when you come across, it's so rare to come across fragrances like that, and this does it for me, and that's why it's my number one. Um, hopefully in these top 20, you find a fragrance that's like that for you. It doesn't have to be, you know, Encre Noir, but I love it when you have a fragrance that speaks to you, that embodies a part of you that you didn't know was there, that, you know, you wear time and time again, because you have so many choices nowadays, and when you have that, when you have a fragrance that you feel like embodies part of your personality, because I never feel like there's going to be a fragrance that embodies all of you. We're so dynamic yeah. and complex as individuals. And I know everyone looks for a signature scent, but we're, we're too 
or too complex to be identified by one fragrance, but I feel like this does capture a part of me and that's why I love it so much. Mm. I love the vetiver part of it. And, yeah. And the Ancre Noir a la Extreme version is also ultra luxury version of the original. Mm -hmm. So the original is good uh, mm -hmm. and it's also very inexpensive. You can get oh, like Ancre Noir for like $30 uh -huh. and the Parfum version is like $40. So there very, you go, very inexpensive. I think both versions are really good. Also, Encrenor means black ink, and there is like an inkiness to it, um, which I really like. I know some people really like ink smells, so again, if you're looking for that, here you are. Yeah. Um, so good. And I think um, I'm just going to keep smelling this. <laughs> it's a good one, guys. Uh, yeah. A lot of these fragrances you can get for discounts uh, available. Some are not as much, but definitely our top five there mm -hmm. are. Well, actually, all of them you can find some discounts. Um, make sure if you like this one, get a bottle because I think it's been discontinued. Ooh, so sad. It when didn't that do happens. very well, but I thought they were going in the right track when they yeah. launched that one. But anyway, that's our list. Thank that's you. That's our list. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know what your favorite fragrances are. Do you like any of these? Do you hate these? <laughs> Do you wish to get some of these? Yeah. Do let us know, put some comments down. Otherwise, please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye, guys.